Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the live composing show. My goodness, I feel like it's been ages since we've done one of these. And particularly for today, I wanted to kick off our hour by mentioning that we're actually going to be moving the live composing show to Wednesdays instead of Thursdays. Wednesdays, every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'm really pumped for this change. It's going to serve our family schedule a whole lot better been experimenting with it over the last couple months, and this is certainly a better time. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really pumped for you guys to be joining me today because um, we are officially done with all the Budapest strings and all the Budapest choir sessions. A total of, let me see if I can do the math real quick. We've done eight hours of choir recordings and five hours of string recordings. And so in total, that ended up being about 60 minutes of strings, final recordings, and 40 minutes, maybe a little bit more, 40 minutes of choir recordings. So now the goal is to take all of this material, combine it together. So we call a mix is when we take multiple takes from different instruments and put them all together, just like you're cooking, right? We're mixing the ingredients together and doing any kind of editing we might need to do or any kind of mastering, any kind of lining up of timings any effects, any EQs, reverb, delay, all these things that would help to make the final production so that we can have a final piece of music to use in Dark Dice Season 2 and beyond because Dark Dice is expanding into other territories and really excited about that. And it is the number one fiction podcast in the world, so I'm very excited about that. And particularly this soundtrack, uh, we have our eyes set on some pretty pretty big award Um, submissions so hopefully we can submit um, and we'll see how that goes and and what that might look like in the next six to nine months I'm really really excited about that Um, I know me and the team are super proud of everything we've done so far and now this stage of the process is actually my favorite stage because now we've done all the really hard work of writing the music recording the music and now it's just down to combining the elements to make something really special and really fun so today i have pro tools open and i really had to fight myself to not clean things up before bringing you guys on board Um, i really want to show you step by step what this process looks like and some of the mundane operations that I have to do as a composer and as a mixer that no one ever talks about or shows because we consider it to be boring or, or uninteresting. But I think it's really important in your education to to spend time with people, professionals who are actively doing what you want to be doing, watch their process. And anytime you can get some kind of perspective, even, even though there's no right or wrong way here, right? It's just my way of doing things. I hope that today you can get some kind of perspective on, okay, cool, that's one way to accomplish this. And at least it gives you some kind of framework when you get to do this one day that you can either do it my way or you can deviate and you can do it, but you have some kind of um, structure and strategy to base this off of. So I'm really proud of what we've done so far. And today my goal is to knock out at least two tracks. That's the goal, one fast, one slow, Uh, We have a total of 14 tracks that we need to do. And I say we, but me. uh, I'm doing all the mixing for this project. 
And I chose to do that. I didn't have to do that. Um, I chose to do that because it's really fun. And I get really, really excited about this part. And I think it's really important that one person mixes the whole soundtrack because then it's consistent and the same effects are used, the same percentages, the same techniques are used. That way it all feels the same because this soundtrack is now almost two years in the making and it will probably be a third year in the making by the time this is all ready. Um, it's a ton of music. Um, and this is 60 new minutes of music. So it's insane how much work is going into this. So it's important that we have that level of consistency. So before we jump into all the fun techie stuff, let me say hey to lots of people who are jumping into the chat. What's up, Robin, uh, Megalyn, Ricarius, The Guardian, Prince, Micah, Shubam? Welcome. And it sounds like we got people from all over the world here today. Um, really excited. I know I know Prince, he was just saying in, in our Discord community, by the way, quick plug, if you're not in the Discord, look right there. I updated the link right there. Just go to stevenmalin.com slash Discord. That's the shortcut. That'll take you to our Discord free community. It's just all a bunch of composers and apparently game designers have now joined our ranks. Um, and Prince uh, is actually a composer in Japan. That's super cool. So it's really late for him. I think he's exactly 12 hours in the future from me. So he's already in tomorrow. That's weird. <laughs> so if you need any fortune telling, just uh, ask him and he can tell you what happens tomorrow. Um, so let's do this thing. Um, th today is not particularly planned because I intentionally want this to be like you're hanging out with me in my studio and I'm, I'm doing the work and I just want to show you exactly what I really do when it comes to mixing. Um, nothing's been prepared and that's the point. So even if some of this is a little mundane today, a little bit techy, that's just kind of how it goes. It's going to be technical. Um, so one more little disclaimer here and we'll jump into the fun stuff just so you we we're all on the same page of where I'm at in this process. So we've recorded all of these ensembles. We now have all of the audio tracks. And when you record at any professional studio, they're going to use Pro Tools because it's the industry standard. And it's not that it's better. It's just the industry standard. It's, it's the tools that everyone has. And we can all share files. So I prepare my, my sessions in advance, one per track. I put a click track in there, I burn it in, which just means I print the audio, I export the audio, and that way the musicians can record to my click track. And then they send the Pro Tool sessions back. So now I have 14 strings Pro Tool sessions and 14 choir Pro Tool sessions. So I have to merge them together. That's what you're gonna see me do in a bit. And then I also have a bunch of stems, which are all of the bounced tracks from the original sessions, whether it was from my Cubase sessions or from Brandon's, because we're the two composers. Um, and then one of these tracks I collaborated with David Wise on as well. So the two of us were using Cubase simultaneously. Um, but what we do is when we finish a track, we bounce all of the stems, which are just wave files of the entire track, every single track, whether it's MIDI or live, doesn't matter. And then it gives me the power here at the end of the session. I can take those synths and those uh, percussion and things that we're not going to record live. I can import all of those from the original session from Cubase into this final mix and then mix it from there. Um, and the final step after this is we do have actively uh, solo musicians around the world um, over the next couple of weeks recording all of the little solo bits, which is another hour's worth of music that... It's about 65, I counted yesterday, somewhere in that range, about 65 phrases across the 14 tracks. Different woodwind instruments, violin, cello, hammer dulcimer, hurdy-gurdy. So I have these professional musicians who are going to record remotely, send me their files as stems, and then I'll just drop them into these sessions. So that's just to kind of give you the overarching plan here, the game plan for why I do it this way. Um, because now we can make some progress together mixing the ensembles. And uh, if the team wants to use this as is, they can. But if not, we can always take those um, violin tracks and cello tracks and everything and um, play with them later. So with all that said, let's have some fun. I'm glad you guys are here. So let's pop over. Let's get to the stuff I, I get really excited about here. Whoopsies. There we go. So I'm in Pro Tools today. And if you'll notice, I've done nothing to this session. This is how the orchestra, so the strings, this is the string session. This is what it looks like. So what they gave me, they have all of their 
routings here. These are called aux tracks. I don't need any of these because it's just like Skype and conductor and guides and clicks. I don't need any of that. So I'm going to delete all those tracks so they don't get in the way. Just the less on the page, the better. And then all of the blue tracks are take number one. I mean, you could call it take or you could call it um, the strings recorded everything at least once. And that's what you see at all the little punch in spots. And then if I scroll down all the pink ones, purplish pink, those are overdubs. And you can tell because it says OD in the um, title. Track titles are super important in this world. So this is the tree mic, the left tree mic, stereo mix, OD, take three. <laughs> so this is their third take. And that's the overdub. So overdubs just mean they recorded on top of themselves. So a second take on top of the others. So thankfully, they're already in the right spots, which is really cool. So I don't really have to move those unless it sounds off. And then down here, these were the reverb and just more aux tracks that we don't need. This is all from the studio, which I might today have to... Give me a sec. How do I do this? Oh, no. I might have to just click manually. There we go. So you can see all of these tracks. I'm going to delete those. And now we are left with the only thing I've done to this session today is I put in a master track. A master track is just a stereo out. It means I can do effects on that one channel strip with effects, and it'll do it on every single one of the tracks. So all I've done so far and this is only for streaming purposes. I put a meta plugin, Voxingo Recorder. If you've seen my video on that, this is how you can listen to what we're doing here today. And it seems to be kind of buggy at the moment. Uh, Pro Tools is a buggy, buggy program. <laughs> um, give me a sec. There we go. All right. So it, it whenever I should I should mention this whenever you're inside Pro Tools, it only uses Pro Tools key commands. So if you try to do any other key commands that are like Windows based, it doesn't do them. So it's very frustrating. That's why I don't use it as my primary program because it's just so frustrating. Because I want to do these little shortcuts that I would normally do, um, but it locks everything into itself. So it's kind of annoying. So I can't use my shortcuts to change my cameras, but whatever. Um, that's not important. But down here in the master, let me show you this. Down here in the master, all I've done is I've put this uh, Fox & Co. recorder. There it is. Which just allows my audio from Pro Tools to stream to YouTube so that you guys can hear it. But that has nothing to do with my sounds today. And actually, I'm going to be really smart. I'm going to put it further down in the chain so that it doesn't like screw up everything if I want to add more effects later. So with all that said, we ready to have some fun. So this first track, uh, just a couple of like housekeeping things. Um, before I do anything musical, it's really important that I take care of everything visually so that I'm not distracted. So some of these things I'm already seeing are like all my markers that I put in. Those are completely redundant. I don't need any of those to show because those are just my notes to the engineers. The only one I might keep is this end marker, which just kind of says where the, tr the piece ends. Um, and most of the time I'm going to be in grid mode, which means when I scroll left and right, I have my grid defined as one bar. So everything is very cleanly a one bar, you see that 39, 40, 41, 42. And it's also gonna show us up here where we're at visually. So that's really important so that we can actually see what's happening. Um, not just so that you can follow along, but me as, as the mixer, I wanna make sure that I always know where I am and, and, and all that stuff. A couple more things I wanna make sure of. I wanna make sure that over here, the A to Z button, this is the most like missed button in all of Pro Tools. No one knows about this. If you click this little AZ button, what it does is it removes the need to push Control or Alt or Shift on my keyboard. This is Pro Tools, by the way, uh, Shubam, who was just asking. Um, when you click this, it removes the need to push the modifier keys on the keyboard. So now I can literally just push one key on the keyboard, such as F, watch this, and now it does fades. It does cross fades wherever I select. 
So just, it saves so much time to have that thing enabled. Another thing I'm gonna have enabled, I'm gonna make sure that right here, the playback insertion, um, this little button, I'm gonna make sure it is off because whenever I push play, as you can see, my little cursor is moving. If I push play again, I want the playhead to return to the exact spot. I don't want it to change. So those are the two most important buttons here that we wanna make sure are toggled correctly or else we're gonna have a miserable experience. And besides that, I like, always like to have, um, the shortcut is escape on my keyboard, my computer keyboard. You'll notice that it's cycling through all of my tools. I like to have all three tools selected at the same time. It's like a multi-tool. Now notice vertically, wherever I move my mouse, it changes. So I can work very fast this way. Big, big deal. And this is, if nothing else, this is why I like Pro Tools so much for mixing because it allows me to make incredibly fast bulk decisions. So let's have some fun, shall we? First thing to make sure we hear something is I'm gonna select all of my first take. And it looks like I, um, the team already did this. They didn't have to do this. But right down here in the groups section, I'm gonna undo it just so we can all see it together. I'm gonna select all the tracks that I want in my first group. I'm gonna hit new group. I'm gonna call it strings. And now I have a group of strings. Now I'm going to deselect that, do the same thing for my overdubs. Create a new group. It's gonna be called strings OD overdubs. And now at any point I can change the volume of one of these things and notice how all of the things slide together. It's pretty amazing. So there it was. Oops. Okay, so now I have two groups that are selected, but that's not enough. We're not done because we need to make sure that all of the audio routing is correct. So I'm gonna select everything. Um, a shortcut on my keyboard. And please guys, if this is like super elementary, just, you know, Pardon me, I don't know how much you guys know about Pro Tools, but it's it's an incredible program. Um, so I am gonna take the moment to show you some of the key commands that are really helpful. Um, so here, if you wanna do one action to everything selected, then you're gonna hold Alt and Shift at the same time. And this way, when you select Output 1, 2, Stereo, oops, come on, there. It now makes everything set to my output. So now, theoretically, if I start playing music, ooh, that's gorgeous. That's a uh, Consordino. It's with mutes. Big fan of that. Um, cool. So again, I can't do anything musical until I have all of these like routing things taken care of. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create two aux tracks stereo and a quick shortcut is over here in the left track menu you can drag it all the way down to the bottom that helps i like to put it right in front of master that way it's very clear and the organization is the same every time call them the same things strings and strings overdub and very quickly i'm actually going to take all of these strings and i'm going to route them to bus, look at my fingers, I'm holding Alt and Shift. I'm gonna shoot them to bus one, two. And then I'm gonna shoot all of my overdubs to bus three, four. But nothing's gonna happen yet until I go to my buses. So bus one, which is the strings aux we created is gonna be bus one, two. Strings overdub is gonna be bus three, four. Hopefully that's clear. This is just basic routing. We wanna make sure that I have one you can't see that. I want to make sure that I have one um, aux track that controls everything. This is different from a group because a group in Pro Tools just changes things like volume, automation. It's different than the aux itself. So that's one of the things that some other programs like to combine, which I hate. I absolutely hate when Cubase, for example, requires you to make a group and then a separate audio track. Like it, it takes so many more steps and it's very, very frustrating. So Pro Tools has it down so perfectly and it's so universally accepted as the way to do things that 
I always try to make my other programs mimic Pro Tools, and it, it's much tougher. So with all that said, we now have strings, and everything's routed properly. So down here, my master, before I even do anything, I already know, since I've, I've done a couple tracks already, I know exactly what I want. So I'm going to do 2C Aether, which is a, a reverb. I'm going to set it to Hall 2. 25%. That's what I've already figured out is like the perfect mix amount to these otherwise dry strings. And then I'm also going to throw a limiter, which is found in dynamics. So L1 is my favorite limiter. It's so simple. I set it to negative 0.1 dB in the out ceiling section. And that way, nothing will ever peak. Just a safety measure. I do it on every piece of music ever. I use that plugin on absolutely everything. All right, so now we get to have some fun. We'll throw the choir in in just a moment, but I want to start to show you why this is so awesome. So right here, I'm going to turn on the groups, strings and strings overdub. That way, when I click any one item, it's going to select everything in the group, which is absolutely incredible because I can click this and it clicks everything in the group. And now it's time to play. Granted that I know that I explained it all and that took, what, 10 minutes to actually set it up. But in real life, if I wasn't talking, that would only take like two minutes to do all of that. So it's not a big deal, but it's worth taking the moment to do it because now we can fly. Watch how fast we do this. So here we go. Um, most important thing to start off with is moments like this, which have a ton of silence baked in. I'm going to go into slip mode which I can use the tilde key on my keyboard to shuffle between the different modes. Slip mode is if we just want something off grid very quickly. And then I'm gonna select just the first little tiny portion of it, hit F for fade, and now all of them have been faded. And I already have in my preferences this exact curve, which is an S curve equal power as my default, which I will use for the rest of the day as my default crossfade. And now all I have to do is start playing and let's have some fun. Fade that out. Beautiful. Next section. It's funny, we can hear all of the little squeaks and stuff before I take. So I'm not really trying to be musical at the moment. I'm just trying to connect any of the takes. So there were two blobs here and I just drew my cursor over them and hit F for crossfade and we will adjust as needed. Wasn't that just flawless? Okay, a bunch of dead air here. I don't want to cut it exactly to the measure. I want to leave a little bit of room space and then fade out that room. And that way the, the reverb will naturally carry it over. Isn't that nice? Okay, a lot of dead space there. Fault start. Okay, here's a perfect example of a moment that I want to replace with another take. So far, everything's been solid. This is my favorite, absolute favorite function in Pro Tools. It's just, this is like no other program can do this at this level. Check this out. Because I have my groups created and I have my auxes all, all settled, this chunk right here was not a perfect take. At least that first note was off. So I'm going to hit just one of these. I'm going to hit, instead of waveform, I'm going to hit playlist. Shabam. And now it's going to show me every take that the orchestra did. This is like hundreds of tracks. It's insane. But in one click, watch this. I'm going to select that take is the one I don't want. So I'm going to erase it. And then I'm going to just solo through these ever so quickly to decide which one I do want. And because that solo button is now connected 
to all of the grouped tracks. It now solos all of them for that exact take for that exact instrument group. Brilliant. So check this out. I liked that one. And we could just very quickly cycle through. My favorite. So that was the sluggish one. Sluggish. I think the second or third was the best. There's a page turn right there, so we can't use that. absolutely perfect so because it's selected it's now because they're grouped it now selects that exact take for all of the microphone positions and then all i have to do is this little arrow boom and that's it i can close it by turning off the solo going back to waveform and now it has perfectly added and i love that it actually changes the color just just something random to show us visually that something has happened which is just brilliant and then I can do my fade. See how easy that was? So good. That was a little too... There it is going. All right, so here's a moment where I don't need a crossfade. I just need a really subtle long fade and a tiny quick intro fade like that. I'll even do a longer fade so it feels more natural. There it is. So to answer a question from Flares in the chat, says, do you like to comp from multiple takes to create the best take on these tracks? 100% yes, absolutely. Because if you noticed, if you watched our recording sessions, we flew, like we got so much music in a short amount of time, but we knew that if we took three or four takes of every measure, there would be one perfect measure in one of them. And so if there's ever a weird section, I just comp them together and it's so fast to do, you just saw it. A moment I don't like. You hear how they didn't change at the same time? So here I'm going to use my slip, I mean my grid tool to hit the measure dead on. I'm going to hit Command E, or uh, sorry, I'm on PC, uh, Control E. It just chops that whole section off. I'm going to delete it. Oops, not delete, but I need to do a playlist rather. See what other options I have to work with. So as you can see here, it's one of these two. It's probably the first one. So I want to try the second one, see if it's any better. And it's not, so let's try the first one. Okay, so here's one of these surgical moments that I need to do a little bit of each. So what I'm gonna do First, make sure the whole group is selected. Do Command E, I mean Control E on the second measure. I want to keep the first measure of the second. You see what I'm doing here? So I'm comping. So what I'm going to do is take 
this measure, bump it up, then take the rest of the measures and bump it up. Now we have ourselves a little hodgepodge that we can go back into slip mode, crossfade, crossfade, and now that should work. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It's like wizardry. This stuff is crazy. That shouldn't work. Like 50 years ago, that would have been absolute mad scientist stuff. Crazy. Now, I'll be honest, I don't like the crossfade point. So I'm going to do it that way so we don't get that nasty fuzz. Somebody hit their instrument. I got to figure out. There we go. We'll do it that way. Not against all kinds of noise, but like when it's really obvious in a, in like a quiet moment, that's really annoying. All right, so really the only solution here is to fade, fade. Cool, that worked really well. Somewhere, yeah, there it is. You can actually see it. There's like a little blip. Maybe you can't hear it if you're not wearing headphones, but sometimes people whack their instruments and or they scoot their chair or something, you know. <clears throat> Got it. See, now I have this first pitch that's just really strong and solid, and the second one now scoops together. This is funny enough, the rest of it's not good. Ugh, that's frustrating. But this is what happens when, I don't want to say we rushed it, but we, we weren't over the top meticulous on our recordings. So unfortunately, I have to do one more of these. Let's see if we can uh, save the day with take one again. You can just crossfade them so that it's as little as possible on the first. Pretty good. expect perfection there's there's no if you get too perfect and too um processed then it starts to sound like midi right it's good to have a little bit of error here and there but if it's something really exposed that's when i want to do that kind of surgery too so now let's take a look at the uh, overdubs overdubs i usually um automatically bring down the volume quite a bit as a group and make sure that they they sit nice on top of the others of the other material so here it is with the overdubs. Okay, so here's a moment. I want to turn down this entire section. How do I do that? There's this beautiful command where you do Windows key or Apple key if you're on Apple. Windows key, Shift. Turn, it brings up the speaker tool, which is this guy right here, without having to actually click on it. And then all I do is do my mouse wheel, scroll down, and you'll notice that all the dBs go down. So I want that pizzicato section to be way quieter, so I'm gonna do like negative 3.5 and see if that helps. And I just keep scrolling my wheel till I find the right mix.
beautiful. So good. Man, these guys, such pros. So good. And to expand on what Jose is asking in the chat, he said, can you please indicate what what's wrong with what I didn't like earlier? I just heard little pops. I heard like some violins or whoever knocking their instrument. It's like these little crackles. It's not bad to have that every once in a while, but it was a very soft, exposed moment at the end of the track where all the other instruments are gone. So that was really important for me to, to get a little bit more surgical. I'm not going to do much of that today, I hope. Because these, I mean, these performances are just absolutely fabulous. Oh, this is off. I have to find... Interesting. Interesting. Did it? Did we really do a separate take as an overdub, and I didn't know it? How funny is that? That this is the, just a copy of this, but a better version. That might actually, I can remove all of those crossfades. Okay, that's a huge win. Didn't see that coming at all. That means the engineer accidentally put this in the wrong spot. That's hilarious. Check that out. Look, it's like a perfect. Oh, I screwed that up. Hold on. Here's a weird moment where I have to turn off all of my groupings because it, it got off. But that's so cool. Look at that. Literally all of the sections I just, I wish I had known this 10 minutes ago. All the sections I just all that crossfading for are actually in this overdub take. Hmm. Go figure. That was a very nice surprise. So let's hear that. <laughs> and it, from what I could tell, it was already a better take than the others because it didn't have all those squeaks and pops. That's probably why we did it. We probably said, hey, can we get another take of that real quick? So visually, I'm going to try to line this up with the counter up here. It's where the big beats start on one, two, three, one, two, three. The pops are just me moving it. So here's a moment where I might benefit from... Um, can you click track real quick just so we can all hear it together? instruments in. Wow, that's really funny sounding with the reverb. So pretty. I'll see if that bothers me later. Okay, so now we're done with that part. Now let's have some fun adding choir. When you organize this stuff, it doesn't take that long. So let's go to import session data. I'm going to find my choir session for, what's this called? Galen Hold. I have lots of folders to go through. Um, they are organized, thankfully. Galen Hold. So here it is. Choir. Um, so now we have this dialog box. I don't want to import all of the junk auxes that I'm not going to use. Instead, I'm just going to select and drag with my mouse everything that I want from that session, which it looks like they have three overdubs. Holy moly. Let's see if we use them all. And you want to make sure that down here, the main playlist options, this is imperative that you say import 
instead of do not import because import will have those playlists like the multiple takes that we did you got to have those and you can tell it where to put the incoming tracks i put it at negative one because that's the same as this session negative one just means like one bar before zero okie dokie so now all of the whoops oh lord check this out look at all these groups that they had that's so ugly so i'm going to remove all of those groups because i just and i like that it turns them gray it's pretty cool when something's not in a group it goes gray just visually pro tools is really smart about organizing a ton of information okay so we're going to take the same approach here let me save it and i want to organize these so reading the track titles is really important here to see what we're working with so whatever it starts over as deca tree that's the next group so i already can tell that there are actually no overdubs so that's really cool so i'm actually going to delete all of those and now this is just going to be one choir so first thing first let's set all of them to a bus I'm going to move all of these to go below the strings. I'm going to change the color so it's not so ugly. Let's do like purplish. Oh no, that's the same color as the strings. Hold on. I don't know. Something like that. It's a little easier to look at. Okay, and since those are all bus five, we need to create another aux track. So this is gonna be choir, bus five, like we just did. And that should all be good to go. We just need to create a group. Call it choir. And there we are. I'll turn everything on so that we can start making music. And since everything is routed through the master, the same uh, reverb effect and everything is already Good to go. Isn't that cool? I think we're ready to start integrating the choir in here too. I don't think I'm missing anything. Let's play. Okay, that is off by an entire bar. Just let me go to grid mode. I'm gonna slide everything over one bar. That's because my import, it was off by a bar. I guess it's two bars off. I probably started the choir at bar one instead of negative one. A lot of solo material happens here. Some solo violin and glockenspiel, I remember. Ooh, that's gorgeous. That's like spooky. Thank you. 
good right there. All right, so this spot a little bit too loud, so I'm going to take all of it and crunch it down a couple dB and then crossfade the two volumes. So I can already tell that the strings are coming in a little too soon. Does this sound like Skyrim to anyone else? Never an intentional thing, it just kind of does. Cool. You guys having fun yet? This is so beautiful, wow. There's something about when you write something in a DAW and it's like all MIDI and it's nice, but it doesn't give you like this like emotional feeling. But as soon as you put live, oh, it like gives me absolute goosebumps. I love it. Something I want to do here, something I've been doing a lot in the mixes lately is um, down in this choir aux. I'm going to add a stereo imager, an S1 from Waves. Let me see if I can find it. Where do they put this thing? Sound field, I guess. Yeah, S1. This thing is absolutely amazing. It's so simple, but by just taking the width of the choir and boom, cranking them up like 30%, check out how much wider and fatter this choir sounds. love that so much because now the choir is going to feel like it's on the sides a little bit further back because of the, the reverb and the strings are going to be a little bit more cl like closer and more intimate i didn't have to do a thing with eq or anything it's just like the natural positioning and because you know choir is more spread out and uh, strings are more close and compact so here's what they sound like all together I'm really happy with that so far. Okay, so now the final step is to create, there's to import all of the stems that we talked about. So any of the extra data, oops, I meant to do audio, import audio. So let me find the original Cubase session that I made months ago. Gosh, this was track number 19 in the soundtrack. So here's my original folder, if you care to see that, where I have all the MIDI, the Cubase session, the like MIDI export, different versions of it. But stems, make sure it matches version two. And there I have all the stems. Now, I'm not gonna import everything because we don't need all of the um, orchestral or choir material. So I'm gonna go through, hold control on my keyboard and deselect anything that we already have live in the mix. Let's see. I, I always try to go out of my way to put MIDI beside it if I know it's going to be replaced. So let's see here. Cello. Nope, we need a lot of these things. We, oops. We don't need... Stop it. We don't need all of these. Hmm... I'd be very careful about what I select here. So those are the guys we've recorded so far. But I did not record live tremolos or flautando strings. 
and we have live solos coming, but not for all of these things. So I'm going to add files, new track, let it load up the queue. And now they're all going to be this ugly gray color until I'm going to move all of these below my master track just so you can see what they are. I also like to make my aux tracks green. That's just the thing I always do. And then I like to make my master track red. That way no, no other tracks are going to confuse my eyes when I'm looking for these guys. But the stems, I like to make gold. That way nothing else is gold. This is just personal preferences here. That way it like it tells me that these either need to be replaced or tampered with in some way. Last step here is I want to make a group for just the stems. There they are. Well, you can't see it, but there it is right there. Right here, stems. That way if I tweak all of them at the same time, I, I can very easily move them all over. So first thing we got to figure out is where do these come in? Gosh, I can't wait to have live hammer dulcimer. Nothing, even the best sandboard dulcimer sounds fake. see what happened it somehow broke all of my oh it's so annoying give me a sec it imported everything as mono that's really dumb so let me just make this easier on myself i'm gonna do like 20 stereo audio tracks that way there's no confusion i'm literally gonna go over to my folder manually so there's no issues here i hate when it does that Um, I'm gonna go to my stems. So now you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna deselect all of the things I've already. <laughs> it's kind of stupid, but that's a Pro Tools ism. If you if you have any mono tracks, it like assumes that your imports are mono. It's a very dumb thing to assume. Okay, so let me deselect all these again. I know it's annoying, but I have to do this correctly. Or else I'm going to suffer later. All right, there we go. So it's only 18 tracks. I'm going to click them and drag them into Pro Tools if it lets me. It might not. I'd be very upset if it doesn't let me. Oh, I get what's happening here. Oh, that's so annoying. Give me a second. Okay, here's what happened. I understand. If one of the tracks of the entire bunch is mono, it will assume that they're all mono. That's what it is. So clearly somewhere in there, it's probably like just one of the things I recorded by hand. The solution, import audio. I was supposed to hit convert, not add. Isn't that so frustrating? I, it did exactly what I told it to do. I can't be mad. But like right here, check this out. So instead of copy files, that's so weird, why? Like I know the shaker, I'm trying to think what I recorded. That would be considered mono. Ugh. Let's try that. Add files. Oh, come on. Gotta love it. Okay. 
Nope, it still did the same dumb thing. Help! What did I do wrong? See, it won't let me drag it in. Oh, this is so annoying. Um. I'm stumped. So please suffer with me while I figure this out. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. In other words, how's it going, guys? You doing well? We were doing so well, too. Okay, let's see if I can solve this. So here's everything. It's assuming somewhere in here. It's not saying convert because it's the same sample rate. I'm trying to figure out that there's something in here causing it. I can try copy files. Huh. Let's see what happens if it does this, if I copy instead of add. So I wonder by processing audio if it's actually combining them. It's very strange. Hmm, let's hope. <laughs> or maybe it's just literally copying all the all the audio as mono. Anyway, I'm really happy with how um, this sounds good. Who says that? Yeah, the Guardian says, uh, or Metaskill says, don't forget to save the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give this thing a second. It's trying to process a heck of a lot of data. Do, 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 do. In other news, uh, what games you guys playing these days? Or what shows, what movies are you watching? I just watched Dune the other night, and it was quite the experience. Oh, man. Error, error. Blowing up, blowing up. Oh, this is so dumb. Pro Tools, why must you be so stupid? Yeah. Does anyone know a fix to this? This is unbelievable. I'm going to Google it real quick because this, this might just ruin my day. Pro Tools, how to import stereo instead of mono. I don't know. Create. Someone says, create stereo tracks manually and then drag from the region list. Oh, that's true. Let me try that. So here's my list. Theoretically, if I just go to stems... Ugh, they're so ugly. Oh, that'll like... Oh, guys, what's happening? I can see what's happening. What? They don't have a clue. Move to recycling bin. Die. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right here. And then I just click and drag. But for whatever reason... It's not being kind. Oh no. That's bad. Hold on, folks. Okay. I think I just deleted everything. Okay. Duplicates can stay. Oh, guys, I'm breaking my entire session. I don't have copies of these stems. I can't just trash them. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Okay, replace the files and destination. Okay, they're back. Okay, we're gonna try this one more time. So, to set the record straight, left, there's all my stems, right, here's all my tracks. Okay, we have. Lots of things here. Let's see what happens when I drag them over. Absolutely nothing. 
I'm lost. Absolutely lost. <laughs> the Pro Tools Blues. That is so true. <sighs> I, I don't even know what to do with my life right now. <sighs> Guys. <laughs> Now I got Lion King stuck on my head. This is not why you guys came here today to watch me sing Lion King. Okay, we're just going to have to deal with the stupid mono because I don't know what else to do. <sighs> Add files. Let's do this. Let's do clip list. Let's see what happens. Oh, there they are. Guys, look. Oh, could it be? OMG. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Where's the Final Fantasy victory theme? Okay. We did it. We outsmarted the Pro Tools. Holy crap, that was annoying. <laughs> okay. Let's get back to the music. That was absolutely ridiculous. But hey, I figured it out. Cool. So I just had to manually do it because somewhere in there is mono recording that screwed up the whole thing. Okay. Where were we? Let's create a flipping group. The only problem is now all of the tracks are not named <laughs> appropriately. So I'm going to have to use the regions. Isn't there a thing for that? Edit. I don't even know. I don't use Pro Tools enough to care. I just don't care. They're stems, for goodness sake. All right, stems. Ooh, cool color. Okay, we're gonna do gold. Move on with our lives. Thank you for playing. That was absolutely miserable. <laughs> Okay, I want to make a quick note here that whenever I'm working with a ton of audio, if I see a bunch of dead blank space, as it's playing, I'm going to just start erasing it so that way I can actually see what's going on. This helps tremendously with deciding what to keep and, and what to move.
Okay, we've almost cleaned this whole thing up. So what I was doing is just getting rid of all of the tracks that are either here or don't need. So some of these were blank, but that's to be expected with, with exporting um, lots of stems, like the same stems for every track, right? We don't actually use all of the MIDI data. Um, I don't know this shortcut that you're talking about, Prince. A and S, what does that do? Uh, I don't know. But now I can take all of the stem data down here by doing the uh, groups. And I can, now that I have like a general mix, I can take all of it and drag it down a little bit. Now let's try again. Now that it's been cleaned up quite a bit. have real recorder and all of these things. Really excited to have live woodwinds and strings on this. It's gonna help so much with all these little solo moments. Especially like Duduk and Hamilton, Hammered, Dulcimer, and uh, Hurdy Gurdy. So I mean, 90% of it's gonna be live. But that's about as close as we can get for today with this track. I'm happy with it. We did the hard work of cleaning all of the sections up. So I'm going to call this one done for now. And that way when I finish with the soloists, get all their stuff in here and, and finish the mix. So I'm going to take a two minute break and open up another session. We're going to do a fast track next with lots of crazy effects and stuff. We'll do the same process. I'll just do it a whole lot faster and hopefully you guys can, can follow along. So let's take a quick coffee break. I'll see you in two minutes.
Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to the live composing show. Today, we're working on some dark dice. Soundtrack material, 60 new minutes of music. It's a whole lot. So, um, we finished one track so far today, and that was Galen Holt, which is a wintry, frozen, ice town. Very sad and slow. And now we're going to flip the script a little bit and work on a track called Wrath of Winter. So it's actually the exact same territory of this world, also frozen. But this one, uh-oh, we angered the winter gods. And so now they're going to attack us, and it's going to be scary. And so for this one, we had a lot of fun with both strings and choir doing a lot of crazy effects. So this one's going to be a lot of fun to mix together. So I'm going to fly through this one. I'm not going to talk as much. Um, I'm just going to keep keep going and since I explained everything that I do in the first track it's all going to be applied here as well so let's have some fun here we go let's dive into Wrath of Winter goal is to knock this out in about 40 minutes or less I think we can do it so let's open up a blank session over here um, from the studio um, this is the strings session first let's get rid of all the tracks we don't need Like last time, all I've done so far is add the Voxingo Recorder plugin so that we can hear what I'm doing. So I already know that choir's coming, and it looks like we have two groups. So I'm going to do three, oops, three stereo aux tracks. Save some time here, drag them down to the bottom. I'm going to call these strings. Strings overdub and choir. Quick way to do this: hold Alt and Shift, and you can actually. Um, I think if we hold Alt Shift Control, if I'm not mistaken, we can go ahead and get all three stacked like that in succession, which is pretty cool. And then, if we do the same thing, let me go ahead and grab each of these guys. Output one, two. All of these guys. Outputs, whoops, I mean bus three, four, that's what I meant to say. Bus one, two, three, four. And then while we're here, let's also create our groups. Group one is gonna be strings. Group two, strings, overdub. I think we're ready to fly. The only thing we need is on the master Put that same reverb, which I've been using. Hold two, 25%. Add my limiter. Negative, oops, negative point 0.1. And we're ready. Let's go.
save. for subscribing. <laughs> Kali absolutely crushed that recording. all the extra that needs to be louder right about there let's bump it up 2 db and then fade in Strings are done. Let's import choir. Same way. So session data. Let's grab from. But you see how much faster this is if I don't talk. <laughs> you just do it in one play and you just edit as you go. Okay. Let's grab. What's this one called? Wrath of Winter. Gosh, this one took an hour. Stinking hour to record with the choir, but it was worth it. This was super difficult for choir. Can't wait to get it in here. Listen to it. I haven't heard any of this, by the way. You are literally, this is like the unboxing video you guys get to enjoy with me. This is all brand new for me. Let's hope this is fun. All right, let's gonna load all the choir stuff real quick. I'm very thankful to have a nice fast computer for this kind of work. <laughs> Otherwise this would be miserable. All right, so if you remember from the last session, it's important to just go ahead and disable all of these like preloaded nonsense groups. And thankfully there's no overdubs, so all I have to do is select and delete all of those extra tracks we don't actually need. And it's gonna take a minute to load all that audio. It's so many takes and stuff. It's an hour of takes. So this guy, we want to do our output, our bus, 256. And let's color code. Actually, first, let's do a group, which I think automatically color codes. Yeah, that's pretty cool how it does that. All right, now, let's see if it's wide enough without the help of any of the, um, Imaging plugin. I might need it though. All right, let's see how this feels. Okay, it's gonna need some help. Sounds awesome, but it needs some help. First thing first, let's crank the volume of choir quite a bit. And then let's grab the same plugin. It seems to be helping on all the tracks. So let's just stick with it for consistency. Let's find a sweet spot. <laughs> That's so cool. Definitely gonna need lots of crossfades today. Sounds like I need to start right out of the gate here. There's gonna be a lot of like individual clip mixing here today. So this one, I need all the reverb to catch. All 
Let's just mix the choir first. I need some help. This one's an Icelandic. It's freaky how much that sounds like French horns. It's, inc it's incredible to me. The human voice can do that. Like there's one voice in there. It sounds exactly like a horn. Bizarre. So cool though. fun day to be a, a singer <laughs> so much fun <laughs> sometimes the men by themselves are not loud enough so I'm gonna really crank them here one of the huge benefits of the waveform you could like zoom in like this to see everything a little bit closer. There we go. <laughs> I think they're saying, beware the winter storm in Icelandic, which is super fun. Wintersform. that um so i have to do like an incremental thing here so the altos come in so i can decrease it a little bit this needs a little bit more love so let's do a couple fades here just to get the volume righted like riding up and hey what's up matt Cranking it up like one giant crescendo. Cool. I don't think we're at this point yet, but just for for clarity, I want to make sure I put a limiter on just the choir bus just in case some of these notes get close to being crunchy i don't want it to go over so there we go just help it a little bit we can actually visually see it and really only thing like negative six negative five but still just a kind of a safety precaution Man, 
powerful. Love choir. It's like the fastest way to make something sound expensive. Throw a live choir on it because it is expensive. <laughs> All right, let's give these a boost. Fades way too much. that good room tone at the end nice okay let's see how that fares now that that's somewhat more musical now let's see how that fares with the strings all right this needs lots of love but we need to like blend it like that a long fade Here's how I feel. The strings are a little bit too loud all throughout, but then moments like this where the melody is really trying to take over, this is what needs a lot of boosting. So let me just boost the strings there like a lot. Then we can do a fade on both ends to help it out. <laughs> and bump it back to 25. It needs it to differentiate these two ensembles. And I feel like this um, widener, this imager might need to be even wider so they can feel in different zones. <laughs>
so fun. All right, one of the ensembles is rushing, so I'm going to see if I can get the choir to back down a little bit. Yeah, the strings rush. That's like that's a universal thing. Strings rush when they play fast. Uh, so let me bump them ever so slightly this way. Let's see what we can do. Crossfade land. It's not much, but... That's just two instruments. <laughs> That's just choir and strings. Oh my God. Wow. Okay. So now the fun part. If it wasn't already fun enough, I want to find the original. This is probably my favorite track. I love this track so much. This is a lot of fun to make. Okay. Let's find all of my audio here. I have 33 audio tracks, so I learned from my last time. Let's just do this the easy way. Create 33 tracks. Go to my clip list. Maybe it'll even let me drag them in here. No, it's not that clever. Okay. I'll have to do it the old school way. Import audio. Let's find that session. Pro Tools is outdated in some ways. But I'm also not using the latest, latest version. So maybe there's some changes I don't know about that make some of these things a little bit easier. Like importing audio should be really easy, but it's a little cumbersome. All right, Wrath of Winter. Let me find it. Stems. Man, we did se I did seven versions of this track. It's kind of crazy. All right, clip list. Here they are in the right, you can see them. Let's drag them in. Let's do grid so that we can, well, first of all, create a group. Stems, let's make them all gold. All right, let's line them all up. And the computer explodes. No, but seriously, it's going to explode. All right. Quick fixes. Let's just delete a bunch of tracks. I mean, this takes so much memory to do all this. Let's get rid of all of the things that are obviously live. Strings and choir. Kept all this, all the tremolo.
I'm pretty happy with this.
very loud track. But that's a lot of fun. Oh my goodness. Now, of course, I can't really complete any of these right now uh, without having all the solos. But what I was just doing is I was organizing these by this top half. These are all tracks that are going to be replaced by live. And the rest are going to be, they're going to stay as MIDI. So we, I decided not to record a bunch of effects with strings. Any of like the secondary effects I just kept down here because these sound really cool. Um, and they sound fine with, um, if you just listen to some of these right here. Right, I mean, those are totally fine in this context. They're just kind of color and texture in the background. that I'm going to do the groups all function real quick. That way every single track in the whole thing is about to be lowered. That way I don't get near peaking. So I'm going to like drop everything by 3 dB or so and then uh, turn it off so I can fix my master back to zero here. Now some of these louder moments aren't going to be so loud. Like here. friends i think that's all i'm gonna do for today i'm right on time and i got two tracks done so goal accomplished so from here as i mentioned at the beginning of the stream from here i'm gonna continue doing this with all the tracks that way i can have a rough mix i'm calling this a rough mix because i've basically mixed the strings and choir the best i can with some of the stems um, but from here obviously i need the soloist to get their, their stuff back. That way I can throw them in and start doing the final mixes, um, which it's amazing how much cleaner everything becomes the more live you have versus MIDI. Because MIDI is just like muddy. Uh, and it takes up so much more headroom than it should. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's a whole lot of fun. And man, this track, look how many little crossfades we did. This is insane. It's like every four bars we did something. That's insane. It's a lot. Overdubs, choir. But you see how much cleaner that is when everything's chopped up? And then the reason I do it this way is when I'm really, really mixing, like the final, final step, if there's a certain section where I need just that one drum section to be louder, I can go over there, grab this tool, and go up and down, right? I can actually make it louder or softer whatever needs to be done. Cool. And that's why it's just so much easier visually and it takes up less space and all that good stuff. A lot easier to, to manage and to see what's actually happening and what I should be focusing on to mix. So there you go. That's how I do it. So I hope this was insightful and fun for everyone. And I'll be doing more of this until it's all done which I'm giving myself about two months to get it all done. That's including the soloists. That way we can have all this stuff ready for um, 
the new episodes and, and all that the team wants to use this music for. So really excited. I thank you guys for being a part of this today. I hope we, hope we learned something. I'm, I'm don't know everything, but I like to share the things that I've experienced. And sometimes we have some roadblocks we can overcome together. Like the crazy lesson about the stereo tracks, gra uh, grabbing from the clip list. Never thought that would have been a solution, but we solved it. So Anyway, hope you guys have a fabulous rest of your week. Um, set your calendars for next Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the next live composing show. That's going to be the new time moving forward.